The Fundamentals of Junto, presented by Amy Powell. Besides the fact that significant educational institutions were developed through ideas starting with the 12 members of Junto, Ben Franklin's club has some deeply embedded values and attributes that make it a quintessential example for educators today. The entire structure of this group required members to have the self-motivation and drive to learn, research, and teach others. Now, even though most of them benefited financially from each other within the group, Junto was also largely focused on education and the diffusion of this acquired knowledge. The members were composed of different talents and educational backgrounds. Some were self-taught mathematicians, some were shoemakers and joiners, but all of them had respect for one another and understood that there was a lot to be gained from each other. Now, this was not just a typical boys club that met weekly. There were rules. As stated by Ben Franklin, Debates were to be under the direction of a precedent and to be conducted in a sincere spirit of inquiry after truth, without fondness for dispute or desire of victory. This made Junto a group of intellectuals that stuck more to factual and researched topics. Junto was similarly set up to our current EDAE 520 course in that they held weekly discussions and had homework that required additional scholarly research. Typical weekly discussions consisted of morals, politics, or natural philosophy, but every three months, members were required to produce and read an essay, or as we know it, homework, on whatever they would like. Each committed member of Junto intrinsically had to have the self-motivation and the understanding of self-directed learning. Given that every person has their own thoughts, experiences, and views of the world, and they didn't have access to internet like we do today, this was a wonderful opportunity for members of the group to learn about new concepts, ideas, educational resources, or even just view similar situations from a different perspective. Now, in order to produce these essays, they needed factual resources to further their research and support their topics. But the pursuit for these resources were probably just as challenging as us trying to find unbiased information on the internet today. This longing for additional information later led to expanding their resources by giving each other access to each of their book collections. This concept is what initiated the Lending Library, which not only benefited members, but later provided other citizens the privilege of one of the most important tools that they could then use for their own self-directed learning. Ben Franklin even noted back then that this improved general conversation of Americans and made common tradesmen and farmers as intelligent as gentlemen from other countries. Now, after a topic was researched and presented within Junto, it was then open to the group for discussion, questioning, and debate. This was a wonderful opportunity not only to practice and enhance their writing skills, but also their communication skills. Junto took on more of a barn raising format, as coined in our Tao of Conversation reading. They built off of each other's ideas and research and had intellectual debates and conversations which encouraged additional thought on the topics. There was not one single person dominating the conversations. Junto members communicated in a way that encouraged conversation for maximum benefit of the group. They were not out to determine who was smarter within the group, but how each of them could become smarter with the help of the group. Ben Franklin taught himself to respond to interlocutors in ways that motivated them to ponder their conversational topics further, which ultimately this allowed both or all parties to come to more thought out and intelligent outcomes. He found that when he used words such as, I conceive, I apprehend, or I imagine a thing to be so, in lieu of a fixed opinion, such as certainly or undoubtedly, the person he was conversing with would become more open-minded, and if it were a debate, he found either less embarrassment when he was wrong, or that the other person was at least more receptive of his position. As quoted from Ben Franklin's autobiography, I denied myself the pleasure of contradicting him abruptly and showing immediately some absurdity in his proposition, and in answering, I began by observing that in certain cases or circumstances his opinion would be right, but in the present case there appeared to be or seemed to be some difference, etc. I soon found the advantage of this change in my manner. The conversations I engaged in went on more pleasantly. The modest way in which I proposed my opinions procured them a readier reception and less contradiction. 
I had less mortification when I was found to be in the wrong, and I more easily prevailed with others to give up their mistakes and join with me when I happened to be in the right. Encouraging metacognition by asking, listening, and responding in a way that does not insult or diminish them, but instead emboldens and opens their minds to other views is a strong trait of a good educator. As Bill Nye once said, everyone you will ever meet knows something you don't. Junto knew this secret long ago, and they used it to their advantage to expand their knowledge and education. But in order to take full advantage of this, members not only had to know how to listen, but they also needed to know how to communicate effectively to access this wealth of information from other members. One member in particular was said by Ben Franklin to have expected universal precision in everything said or was forever denying or distinguishing upon trifles to the disturbance of all conversation. He soon left us. I could only imagine the wealth of information and opportunity he missed out on because his choice of conducting close-minded and combative conversations. Leadership. Ben Franklin recognized the importance of education among the people and how he could motivate others to further educate themselves no matter their social standing. With him being virtuous and humble, he was very successful in people accepting and retaining information he shared. This wound up being far more productive in conveying this information than if he had an arrogant personality, especially with members of the lower and middle class. Through his Poor Richard's Almanac, Franklin was able to impart some of these invaluable lessons to a very large amount of people. Ben Franklin took on more of a servant in lieu of an autocratic leadership role within Junto, and a number of his larger accomplishments were done so esoterically. He could have diffused his knowledge with pomposity, but when he would propose projects, he would do so clandestinely. Junto was a secret club that he did not want publicized, and even his poor Richard's almanac was written under an alias. He understood that when he involved people and cultivated metacognition through different forms of diffusion, it would have a lasting effect on the learner, and doing so without an ego reached so many more people who otherwise could have easily written him off as pompous and not gained any wisdom from this intelligent man. So what can we, adult educators, learn from Junto? Educators starting out today have a very innate motivation to make a positive difference in society. Junto was a highly successful club because of the support, values, and members' respect for continuous education. It not only produced institutions that are used for scholarly resources and education that are used today, but also the foundation for current societies, clubs, and chapters that support continuous education, as well as intellectual camaraderie. But on a deeper level, educators today can learn the ingrained practices of Junto's members which included continuously educating ourselves, how our communication styles may help or hurt our students and our own opportunity to learn and or disseminate our knowledge, the best leadership style based on who you intend to educate, and humanitarian motives in our education styles or endeavors.